Yo, what's up people? If you are new to the channel, then my name is Ricky Benang and today I've got a very special video for you. So today what we're going to be doing is pulling out the archives. We're going to be looking at some old photos of myself over the past 28 years and taking a look at just where my hair loss began to emerge, when it started to progress, when it started to get worse and we're going to be taking a look at some old photos. I am really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a fun video just to reminisce and look at these old photos again after so long and I really do hope that you guys at home enjoy it as well. So without further ado, let's get into this. So we're going to be starting here in the 1990s, 1991 to be exact, and as you can see in this photo, I'm only a few months old at this point, maybe only a month old, and you can see that I've got no issues when it comes to hair loss whatsoever. In fact, for a newborn, I've got quite the head of hair, so <laughs> no issues there whatsoever. Now moving on to this next photo, this one was actually taken when I was around 10 months old and as you can see here, I'm a fat chubby little thing at this point and I am definitely not going through any hair loss issues at the moment. In fact, I've got quite the man bun, I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but nevertheless, another photo here of me with the man bun and I really don't know what's going on with this photo or why my mom let my hair grow this long, but it is what it is. I guess she thought it was a cute look for me at the time. Not quite sure if I'd go for that look now, not that I can anyway, but it is what it is. So this was around when I was about one years old, I'd say, and you're probably wondering what the hell happened to all that hair you just had about two months ago. Now, let me get into it just as brief as I can. Basically, my mother decided that for religious purposes, she needed to shave my head. I'm not sure why exactly. I'm not sure if it's for blessings or good luck for babies when they're kids. And you can say that this was the first time I ever dived into having a buzz cut, having a bold look going and you can see I don't look thrilled about it but I guess it's foreshadowing for the future of what was to come for Ricky Benang. And as you can see here, got the shoes going as well, got the swag, got the yellow socks, the purple trousers, the camouflage top. Not quite sure what's going on there but it was the 90s, you know, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air era. Maybe I was going for a look, who knows. Now we're gonna jump a few years ahead. Now this was me when I was four years old and once again rocking that swag waistcoat. This must have been a school photo and can see no issues with the hair whatsoever at this point either. Happy little boy. Once again here at six years old, again not quite sure what's going on with the fashion but it is what it is, I looked like a happy little kid, didn't I? Now we're gonna jump ahead a few years. We're gonna jump to 2007 for this particular photo. This was just after I finished high school, I believe, and honestly, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the hair, but I've seemed to have enough of it, so no issues there. Did have those skinny little noodle arms as well at this point. Okay, so moving on to this photo, which was taken in 2008. I was turning 17, I believe, at this point, and Honestly, I'm not sure what's going on with the look. I don't know if I was there for a Bollywood audition of some sort. I was in India in this photo. I'm not sure if I was trying to maybe audition for India's Got Talent or something, but I was definitely going for some kind of Bollywood movie star look. <laughs> Even had the long hair, got a little bit of a mullet at the back as you can see, got the shades and everything. Don't quite know what's going on with the look, but no issues with the hair loss as far as I can see. <laughs> Moving on to this photo and I don't even know how to explain this one. I'm wearing an apron for some reason. I could not cook at this age, bear in mind. I could not cook for shit, but for some reason I've got an apron on and I'm doing a little gun finger. Even got the little spikiness at the front, got the mullet once again, clean shaven. I don't know what's going on with this look or even with this one. You can see that I was using a lot of product in my hair. I used to use something that was like a hair glue at that point and you know you get those cheap little hair gels and hair glues and waxes that can be sold for like two pounds or two dollars and you gotta admit they're probably no good for your hair but when you're a high schooler I guess that's the first thing you go to and you don't really think about that kind of stuff. You don't really think about how it's gonna affect your hair, at least I didn't and I do believe that using those cheap kind of products, those cheap kind of hair gels, definitely 
progressed my hair thinning. Maybe not my balding, I think that was just genetic, something that I was destined to have. But as far as the thinning is concerned, I definitely believe that using cheap hair gels and cheap waxes played a big part in my hair loss progression. Now, we're gonna move on to 2009 for this next photo. And as you can see, no longer got that long hair. I'm 18 years old in this photo. Still got those skinny noodle arms as you can see. Got the little t-shirt to hide the bird chest. <laughs> Even got this slit in the eyebrow, God knows why I've got a slit in my eyebrow, I don't know, but yep, as you can see I've chopped off the long hair, and this photo is very interesting, because you can see right in this area at the front of my scalp, where my fringe is, I'm beginning to lose my hair, I'm actually beginning to thin. So I was actually starting to go through this hair loss progression from 18 years old, which is crazy. And you can even see here that I've, maybe it's subconsciously, I've chosen to comb my hair forward to make a bit of a fringe. Maybe because I was on some level subconsciously aware that I was beginning to lose my hair here, who knows. Another one here where I'm 18 years of age, and once again, you can see with that fringe, I'm blatantly combing it forward compared to the rest of my hair, which is spiked upwards. Maybe again, I was subconsciously aware on some level that I was thinning and I just didn't want to accept it maybe, who knows. Okay, now we're jumping into 2011 with this photo. You can see here, I've put on a little bit of chunk, put on a little bit of weight, got that Muhammad Ali top on. But yeah, once again, I don't know if you can see in the quality of this photo, but again, on that left side of my scalp, you can see where the fringe is that the hair does seem to be a little bit thinner. So you can see that slowly but surely at this point, the hair loss was starting to catch up with me a little bit, but I just didn't know it. All right, now we're gonna move on to 2012 slash 13. This one right here is taken in 2013, so I was about 22 years of age, I'd say, looking a little chunky once again. And you can see in this particular photo as well, once again on that same left side of my scalp, I'm combing my fringe forward, and you can even see, I don't know if you guys can tell, but you can even see that I'm gr trying to overgrow that back part of my hair to comb it forward into a fringe almost, because I know that area is beginning to thin. Now let me just show you another photo. This one was taken in July of 2013 once again. Boy, I put on a little bit of weight, didn't I? But take a look at that hairline right there. Now, right there, you can see blatantly just how exposed my scalp was beginning to get. And this was the point where, you know, if it ever was a rainy day and I got caught in the rain, it was a fact that my scalp would be full-fledged on show because that hair at the front was really that thin. This was also the point where I began to get comments from my friends saying that you're thinning at the front, maybe you should, you should consider shaving your head and god it used, it used to piss me off at that point I remember it used to really get under my skin when my friends said that shit to me because at that point it just wasn't something that I would ever have considered it was nothing it was a no-go at that point so the first thing that I thought to do was of course cling on to my hair as many of us do Okay, so now we're going to move on to 2014, and this was definitely a prominent year. I want to show you this photo firstly, simply because, as you can see here, in my face, I've definitely lost a little bit of weight. This is where I began to get into working out and fitness and taking care of myself. And for whatever reason in this photo, I don't know if it's the lighting, but as you can see, the hair loss doesn't look as prominent. Now, I think that is down to the fact that I just combed it very well in this particular photo. I'm not outdoors, so I don't have to worry about wind in this photo. And maybe that's just the effect that this photo's given. Or maybe it's down to the fact that somehow my hair loss stopped regressing for a little bit because of the fact I was changing my lifestyle. I'm not really too sure. Moving on to another photo here. Once again, as you can see, I've lost quite a little bit of weight for this one. So skinny neck, got a bit of a skinnier face, but once again, I am still using that same method, as you can see, of combing my the front of my hair to the side and doing a little bit of a comb over. You can see right there in that corner, I've got a little bit of a curled hair, meaning it's not from the fringe, it's kind of further upwards and I've combed it that way to hide the hair loss maybe, but Either way, you can still see that it's there, but it just hasn't taken over yet. But I'm gonna show you one photo here from a different angle where the perception is totally different. Now look at that. If you take a real close look at that, you can see that 
if it wasn't for my fringe being combed downwards like that, if that was to be blown upwards or if I was to comb it upwards, the hair loss would be very evident and very prominent. Now, it really does show that I was aware at this stage and I was combing it in that way to hide the fact I was balding. Because at this point, that's what it had become. I wasn't just thinning anymore, I was actually starting to lose that hair at the front, which was crazy at the time and something that really did test my anxiety. Now we're going to jump into the big one, 2015. Now this year is the year where things really got testy for me. Things really, I really did get tested in terms of my hair loss. Now you look at this photo right here. This was taken around the summer of 2015. As you can see, I got a drink looking a little bit tipsy or worse for wear to say the least. But take a look at that hairline right there. Now tell me in that space of a year, how much has that changed? You can see blatantly at this point that the hair is beginning to go. Flat out go. It's not just thinning anymore. But those two areas around the front of my scalp were totally out of hair. They didn't have any hair anymore. So I was beginning to get that widow's peak, that Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z kind of look going on. It was so obvious that I was losing my hair, but everyone around me knew it except for me. Another one here, again taken around 2015, and you can see in this photo once again that part at the front is thinning. This is also, however, the round the time where I began to do something quite stupid. I began to actually use a black crayon, that's correct, a crayon, to hide the fact I was balding at the very front. So I started colouring in the areas where I had no hair to give that illusion that I still had hair in those areas. And it really does show when it gets to those kind of extremes, it's a little bit sad, it's a little bit pathetic, and it does show that maybe it's time to just embrace what you're going through. And that's the case, that's the battle that I was going through at this stage. But once again at the front, if you really look closely, you can see it's beginning to go on those sides. Now, what I'm going to do is show you a photo of where I finally decided enough is enough. I need to embrace this hair loss shit for what it is and get rid of it. Now take a look at this photo right here. This photo was actually from a Facebook post that I made where I announced publicly that enough is enough. Guys, I want to go out there and I want to challenge myself by by embracing this anxiety that's been taken over my life. I decided to take these photos to show just how bad my hair loss actually is. So you can see right here, I'm not using that fake little trick that I do with the crayon. I'm not combing my fringe forward. I'm pulling the hair back to show just how bad it had, it had actually become. And you can see right there on the two sides of my scalp, I had no hair left. And that part at the front was so thin that there was really no point holding on to it. I didn't have a hairline at this point. And the following day is where I actually decided enough is enough. It's time for me to shave my head. And as you can see in this photo right here, I finally went through with it. And this was my first photo as a bald man. I was 24 years old in this photo, which is crazy. I am now 28. To look back at this and to even look at the fact that I'm smiling, I don't believe in that smile because I know for a fact in this photo, that smile wasn't genuine. I was full of anxiety stepping out the house that day. I did challenge myself, I did make an effort, I did make a genuine effort to stay positive, to stay smiling, to embrace what's happened, but I know behind that smile right in these photos, I didn't believe in myself. And it is unfortunate for me to say that my anxiety was so bad that I actually had to revert to growing my hair back. Well, I at least attempted to. Now, this is a photo about two months later where I tried to grow my hair back. And to be honest, it was a wake up call because I realized just how bad my hair loss progression was. You can see right here on the sides and even at the back, I had plenty of hair. It was growing just fine, but that area in the middle and at the front of the scalp, it just wasn't doing it, it wasn't cutting it. But regardless, nevertheless, I still pushed through and I kept continuing to try. And you know, the crazy part about this and looking at this photo right here, I actually had more anxiety in this point in my life than I did when I had initially shaved my head. I had more anxiety at the fact that you could see how bad my hair loss was here. You could see that I was losing my hair, but I was so desperate to just try and grow it back. I kept thinking if I just push through, if I just push through a few more months, it might go back to what it was. 
and it just wasn't gonna happen. So this was about three or four months later, my hair, as I said, at the sides and the back, it had progressed nicely, but at the front, it wasn't doing it. And this is where I'm afraid to say, and a bit ashamed to say, to be honest, that I started using hair fibers, which is like a powder, to cover up the fact that I was balding. You can see that I've got nothing to work with, but if you take a real close look in between those hairs, you can see some kind of a powdery substance that I was using to mask the fact that I had no hair there, and to make it look like my hair was growing in that area. And to be honest, this led to one of the most anxious times of my life because I was kidding myself. I was fooling myself. I was giving myself this illusion that everything was okay, that I didn't have anything to be anxious of. I, my hairline was fine. You can see right here in this photo alone, look how unnatural that looks. You can see that I've taken my finger, placed powder on it, and made this fake hairline, trying to give myself the impression that I'm okay, but it clearly wasn't, because every time I went out into the house at this point, if it rained, if it was snowy, if it was windy, if someone touched my hair, I would freak out because I knew I would get exposed. I would get exposed as a person faking something they haven't got anymore. And that really bothered me. And now we're gonna go into 2016, and this is where I'm glad to say I realized that enough is enough. I have to accept this change because there is no going back. Unless I get a transplant, unless I start wearing a toupee, there is no going back. Now this photo right here was just before I shaved my head for the second time. This was February 2016, and I took this photo clear as day, no hair fibers in my hair, and you can see just how bad the hair loss had progressed. You can see on the side there, you can see that it's just, it's just head, there's no hair there. Just in this middle part right here, there's a little bit of hair, but there's nothing else to work with. It looks stupid at this point. And this is where I'm so glad to say that, as you can see in this photo, got the guns blazing, in shape, happy, and this time I can say that it's a genuine smile on my face. I embraced it for what it is, and I'm not gonna say that I didn't have my days where I was anxious in these moments. Right here, you can see I got the suit and tie, suited and booted, guns out once again, but a genuine smile. Like I said, I'm not gonna say I wasn't anxious in these moments. It definitely still took some getting used to, but I'm glad to say that I embraced it for what it is, and with enough positive reinforcement, and also from doing these videos and encouraging you guys, it gave me the confidence to embrace myself for what I am and who I am. Not someone who is defined by their physical traits, but someone who is defined by what they are on the inside. And what I am on the inside is a confident man who is capable of a lot, and that goes for every one of you as well. Now we're jumping into the end of 2016, even got the beard going here. Bold, bearded, and as you can see, loving life, happy as can be, and genuinely in my elements here. Now we're just going to scroll through some photos. This one it was in 2017. This one was at the end of 2017 and again, big smile, happy. And this is at the stage where I was really getting into the zone. I was really happy with this new change and the person in the mirror, I could recognize them. I wasn't afraid of who I was anymore. I wasn't afraid of this new identity. I knew that everything was good. Everything was fine as long as I believed in myself on the inside and carry that internal sense of confidence, I would be okay. And I do want to give a big shout out to my fiance, Atasha, on this one, you know, she gave me the confidence in these situations to truly believe in myself and I thank her for that every day, you know, she's a good woman and <laughs> you can see right here, she fed me well as well in that first year anniversary of ours. Got that weight going, got that relationship weight going, but I was happy, what can I say? It's crazy because I was always told at this point in my life that mainly by family who are a bit more old school, a bit more traditional thinking. They always told me that, you know, you need to grow your hair back because if you don't, you're not gonna find a girl, you're not gonna find a wife, no one's gonna find you attractive and it's nice to say that I defied those odds. And that goes for every one of you guys as well. You can defy those odds too. February 2018 right here. Now you're probably wondering what the hell is going on? Why have you got a head full of hair all of a sudden? So in this particular instance, what I did, I let my hair grow out for about three weeks because I wanted to do an experiment to see just how much my hair loss had progressed. And as you can see here, it definitely wasn't looking any better. 
You can see how much the hair was thin at the very front of my hairline and it's crazy to think this happened from 18 all the way to about 24 years old. It happened so quickly and that's going to happen to a lot of you guys as well and that's where I think a lot of the anxiety comes because it can just hit you just like that out of nowhere at times. Anyway, I did this experiment just out of curiosity really, just wanted to see how much my hair loss had progressed and once I had been satisfied and my curiosity was fed, I went back to a shaved head, no issues whatsoever. Here we are in May 2018, enjoying the sun, loving life, flower shirt on show, beard and glasses on show, bald head on show, what more can be said. Here's me with my beautiful fiance Atasha once again, a woman who's always given me great confidence and great belief in myself, always trying to be a better man for her and, you know, she brings out the best of me and she is of course my better half as well. Funny story actually, me and Natasha actually met all the way back in 2013 for the first time. We had a small talk conversation at a friend's party and then we never saw each other again all the way until 2016 and by that point I had no hair but it's crazy she actually says that even though she was intrigued by the person back then, she loves the person of today, the person who has this bald head. And that goes to show, you know guys, it doesn't always matter how you look. You may have had hair once and felt confidence with it once, but it doesn't mean that if you that changes later down the line that you're not still going to be an attractive, confident individual. You're still going to be able to carry yourself with that, but it all starts with you on the inside and how you perceive yourself. Just scrolling through a few photos here once again, and you can see, in terms of life, I'm very happy. This one was taken last year in August 2019 where me and Natasha actually did a photo shoot and you can see here we're looking good together, everything's good, the bald head's on show, feeling in shape, slim down that relationship weight, life is good. And here's me in December 2019, got that moustache on show, life is good once again. Anyway guys, that's the end of today's video. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And I really do hope that it inspired you to be able to embrace your hair loss a little bit better because it is a difficult journey. And you can see in these photos and from what I've said in the video as well, I did have my hurdles with it. I definitely had a mental battle when it came to hair loss. And I did come out on the other side. I know that you can do it. You've got the support that you need in me. So if you ever need to talk, if you ever need to ask a question, don't hesitate and I'll be happy to shed some light and try and help you the best I can. There's also other YouTubers who do great things like Max De Silva, Bald Cafe. Shout out to those guys because they do great things as well for our community. And you know, we're all in this together at the end of the day and no one should be standing alone on this journey because it is something that can affect our mental health and well-being, especially for guys, you know, so don't suffer in silence always remember to speak out talk about it you know get help and remember that external confidence is just that external it can come and go just like money just like anything else but what really matters is what you carry on the inside you want to develop that internal confidence to see you through anyway guys i do hope you enjoyed the video q a coming up soon so leave your comments below and i'll see you guys in the future peace out